The Settlers of Catan is one of the most successful board games ever created. It perfectly balances exponential decision making with social interaction and collaboration. Now while the game might be very easy to learn, there's quite a high ceiling there for advanced strategic gameplay and psychological theory. I recently spent the past month studying over 200 Catan games, and I think I found the secret strategy to winning. I had found that 73% of the time, the person with the most efficient and quickest start of the game ended up winning the entire thing. Now what this tells me is that the opening phase of Catan is much more central than we recently thought. Now unlike chess where opening variations can be memorized and are widely repeated, no game of Catan is the exact same. Each time you play, the hexes, numbers, and ports will be in different places, and so your opening strategy will have to adapt because of it. Luckily, we can use statistics to tailor our opening strategy based on our starting settlements. Because we play with two dice, we know that there are only 36 possible outcomes for any given roll. Let's take a 4 for example here. There is a 1 out of 12 chance of a 4 being rolled, and that's because there's only 3 possible combinations for rolling a 4, right? 2 and 2, 1 and 3, 3 and 1. These 3 different combinations out of 36 possible combinations is how we get the 1 out of 12 and the 8 and a third percent chance. What am I watching? Is this Catan or Matt? Okay, sure, yeah, but chill out because I'm getting there. What this means for us is that we should interpret this as on average we can expect to reap the benefits of the 4 3 different times throughout 36 rolls. And by using this process, we will be able to plan out our opening strategy to know what we might have in abundance and what we might need to trade for early on. Now just like in any other sport, it is essential to visualize your success before it can happen. Let's use our knowledge of statistics to plan out our opening strategy for our first impactful move of the game. Let's use one of the 200 games as an example. Let's play as black here and ask ourselves, what is our first actionable goal this game? and how can we achieve it. Now let's use statistics to visualize how we might progress. We start the game with a brick, a wheat, and an ore. And I believe our goal here would be to build a road in the settlement to settle on the 6-2 wood port. To do so we would need two wood, one brick, and one sheep. That's it. Now let's sit back and use the statistics that we talked about before to see how much of each resource we can expect to have after each roll of the dice. Now after 9 rolls, we can expect to receive 1 wood and 2 ores, based on the probability of the 5 and the 9 being rolled respectively. Now let's keep going. Now 3 rolls later, we see that we will, on average, get another road worth of materials. This checks off 3 out of the 4 resources we need to complete our first goal. But we still need to get a sheep this game. Generally, since we can expect to have an excess of ore here, we may be most efficient by trading away that ore for a sheep. Now, this might seem very obvious, especially in this example, but planning out your expected resource output before the game just prepares you to jump on an ore for a sheep trade with someone like Green here, who is on a lot of sheep, but not any ore. And with red and blue also being large ore producers, it might be a little bit of competition, so it's essential to jump on this trade as quickly as possible. Now obviously, this won't always be the case. The dice just are not fair. What this does instead is gives us an idea of the economy of the board in general. What resources can be sold for cheap? Which ones are going to be a little bit tougher to come by? And now personally, what are we lacking in our opening moves to becoming self-sustainable? As our dice rolls begin to stray from the bell curve, we need to adapt the plan. Okay, sure we expected to have a bunch of ores here, but right now we have none. We have a bunch of brick. Adapt our plan, let's trade some brick, to help our game get going. Now from this, you can even take it another step forward. You can use this process for every other player in the game. Now we'll know what they're gonna be looking for, and maybe we can find our natural trading partner. Now if you wanna practice this strategy, the best way of doing so is through colonist.io. You can play with your friends, strangers around the world, or even compete in ranked matches. It is a platform that I use to elevate my game to the next level and play against some of the best players around the world. I highly recommend you check it out, the link will be in the description below. At the end of the day, this process does two things. One, helps us make sure we're not losing value in our trades. And two, 
Let's see who's accelerating much faster than they normally would be. Maybe we should put the robber on them. Now I hope this video helps those getting stuck in the opening phase of Catan. By having a focused opening strategy, reinforced and supported by statistics, you will accelerate at a much faster pace and set yourself up for victory in the long run. Thanks for watching.